So without God, society collapses morally, and a society that collapses morally will soon collapse socially, economically, politically, and in every other way. The whole thing will fall into a heap. Alexander Tyler famously observed from history. The world's great civilizations have progressed through this sequence. From bondage to spiritual faith, from spiritual faith to great courage, from courage to liberty, from liberty to abundance, from abundance to selfishness, from selfishness to complacency, from complacency to apathy, from apathy to dependence, from dependence back again into bondage. I have turned his observation into a kind of graph to help us visualize what he's saying. The pivotal point in the upward curve, according to Mr. Tyler, begins with spiritual faith. That is to say, it begins with God. As soon as God enters the picture, the moral entropy is reversed, and instead we get an increase of courage, liberty, and abundance. Notice also then that the pivotal point in the downward curve begins with selfishness. That is to say, doing what I want, living how I want, defining my own truth apart from God. We learned earlier that this is in fact the path of Satan. We also learned that these are the only two paths in life, both for the individual and the society at large. Either follow God's moral law or choose do what you want, Satanism instead. If society follows one, it will flourish. If it follows the other, it will decay. It's that simple. Yet it very much seems from this chart that society is forced to hit rock bottom from time to time, like it's part of a natural cycle. And when it does hit rock bottom, the people suddenly realise their need for God, and there is a return to spiritual faith. God then blesses us and we benefit from it. Then, having reached a position of plentiful abundance, we begin to forget the source of our blessing once more. We get comfortable and apathetic. We start to imagine in the deceitfulness of our hearts that we reached this peak by our own efforts, that we can now divorce God, abandon God, start to ignore and even hate him, decide to go our own way instead, become self-sufficient, selfish and sinful. And at that point, the decline begins once more. All this tells us one very important fact, that the key figure in a healthy society is God. So let's be absolutely clear about this. No politicians, governmental programs, educational policies, general elections, healthcare reforms, tax breaks, monetary investment or law changes of any kind will fix our mounting social problems, at least not by themselves. As well intentioned as those things may be, the only cure that ever halts and reverses the moral entropy of the sinful nature and society as a whole is God. The solution isn't a program, it's a person. The upward curve begins with him only, and Christians especially, I think we've lost sight of this. As this series is being recorded, it's an American election year, and social media outlets have been flooded with pledges of support for various candidates. And I'm talking fanatical support. I'm talking 20 Facebook posts a day support. Vote for this guy. This is the hero we need. He's going to put everything right. He's going to turn our country around. He's the only one in which we can trust. Now I can understand non-Christians being caught up in this fervour for a messianic human leader, but Christians, we should know better. We simply must get out of the habit of thinking that the next president or prime minister or economic policy or tax cut or foreign policy will make everything right in the nation. In the run-up to elections, it's so common to hear things like, vote for this guy because he'll pull our troops out of that war we're in, or I'm voting for this guy because he's going to reform the health system. In fact, I've recently seen people insisting that a president should be voted in simply based on his pledge to lower gas prices. Gas prices? Really? This is our utmost concern? How could we have missed the point by so much? None of these issues will affect the overall trajectory of your country. None. Remember the first key point that we learned in this series was that you can't fix internal problems with external solutions. The problem for our nations is not fundamentally external issues like the economy or the tax system or the foreign policy or the health budget or some war. These problems are all just outworkings, mere symptoms of people who have become internally diseased, corrupt, greedy, cruel and selfish by the godlessness of moral entropy. At the root of all our problems is self. Our healthcare systems are crippled because people are selfishly eating too much, drinking too much, smoking too much, fornicating too much, and not exercising enough. Our self-restraint and discipline is broken down. We're hedonistically gorging ourselves to death. 
Our economy went down the toilet because of sheer greed. Poverty is perpetuated because of corruption and self-interest. Wars start because we lust after the natural resources that other countries have. The products we buy are kept artificially expensive because of exploitative price fixing. Advertising executives are employed to lie to people about those products so that people will be duped into handing over money for things they don't need and which won't benefit them. What allows people to cheat, manipulate and kill others for profit like this? What is it in a human being that would rather spend millions of dollars on a private yacht for himself rather than give the money to buy food for people who will literally die without it? What is it in people that would rather have five houses for themselves when others have none? The disease of self is the cancer that's destroying us. So fix people internally and you will fix everything else automatically. So how do we change hearts? What can reverse this inner moral entropy that's taking hold? The answer is God and only God. Therefore our only hope is in him. Allow God to change us internally and everything else will start to correct itself naturally. Health, prosperity and safety will return to our land. Like I said, we should really know this already. The central verse of the Bible is Psalm 118.8 which says, It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Psalm 146.3 says, Don't put your trust in powerful people. There is no help for you there. These verses are true. If you're distracted by the mudslinging politics of left and right and putting your trust in a human leader, then you're distracted from the only issue that really matters, and that is whether God has his rightful place in society. Give God his place and everything else will take care of itself automatically. But take God away and nothing any man ever does by himself will ever succeed. Now who are the ones charged with giving people the word of God? Who are the ones that Jesus charged with the Great Commission? The politicians? The civil servants? The judges? The school teachers? No, it's Jesus' followers. It's the church. It's us. So if we want change, we shouldn't be looking to the government to make it happen. We should be asking ourselves how we're going to make it happen. The church must be the driving force. We've become so used to blaming the government and depending on the government for all our hopes and dreams and solutions. That dependency will lead us to bondage. We need to step up to the plate on this one. If only we were as enthusiastic about spreading Jesus' name as some of us are about spreading a politician's name every four years. If only the people who flood Facebook with posts on human political candidates had the same fervour in spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ, then we might be getting somewhere. Have we not noticed yet that no matter how often the leadership of our country changes hands, things just keep getting worse? Every premiership begins with fanfare, hope and optimism that this is going to be the guy that will change things. And every premiership ends with the whole country desperate to get that same guy out. And then this paves the way for another guy, normally from the opposing party, to come along claiming to be the one to really put things right. And the country works itself into a fervour again, claiming that this is the real messiah. Over the years the whole thing seesaws back and forth from one party to the other, repeating itself over and over, and all the while things continue to deteriorate. Don't put your trust in men, put your trust in God. Countries don't fail because a guy from the left is in office or because a guy from the right is in office. They fundamentally fail because of godlessness. Any man in office without God is going to fail. Any man with God is going to succeed. But above any of this, any country where the citizens have God in their hearts is going to experience safety, health and prosperity, and any nation without God is going to suffer moral entropy, which leads to violence, sickness and poverty. If our manipulated political systems and illusion of democracy doesn't put forth any candidates worth voting for, then work to change the system. But don't expect things to improve unless God is central to our efforts. We must get him back into schools, law courts, halls of government, and most importantly of all, into the hearts of men and women around the country. It's the only thing that matters. Now a final word of warning on this. If you continually put your faith in a charismatic human leader to save the day, you may just one day find yourself hailing the Antichrist himself. Don't look to a man, look to God.